So today I will give uh, uh, three topics, uh, each of them with examples, just with the uh, purpose to motivate everyone for this field and also showcase a bit what we could do today. So the first topic is, as I mentioned earlier, is rather use AI for EO for societal grant challenges. And um, I will talk uh, about one use case, which is rather about uh, uh, global overmapping. Um, as you know, that uh, this will then probably mostly related to two uh, UN's SDGs, which is the number one, no poverty, and the number 11, which is the sus uh, sustainable cities and the communities. So as you might uh, all know that we are living in an urban planet, so basically, this is the UN's figure regarding urban and the rural population. What you can see from here is that uh, in 2008, there is a secret change of the human history. You will see that there are more people living in urban areas than the rural area. And if you see how things evolve, this trend it will become even more pro dominant. And you will see the increase of the future population that were literally all living in the cities. I guess this is a fact which is known to everybody. But what is a bit more is that if you look at the geospatial distribution of uh, urbanization, you will see that uh, dark blue is more established uh, urban area. These are more at the developing uh, regions. And however, if you look at the more bright or uh, very light blue, this is the places where urbanization is currently happening and where it happened in the future. You will see that urban growth happens mostly in developing areas. For in order to have the urbanization rather planned, the first uh, key is to get geoinformation of these urban areas. Here I just give you one example why it's like this. So uh, this is uh, uh, Mumbai very uh, dynamic with urbanization. So basically, you can see that um, in the news, in the past decades, there were uh, a lot of fires uh, happened uh, in Mumbai. And what is really sad is that nearly 70% of this fire are actually caused by faulty wiring because the um, city planners um, don't have sufficient information uh, of the uh, slums and then uh, due to in appropriate, uh, um, uh, let's say, planning of the infrastructure, which leads to uh, this kind of uh, fires uh, is, of course, a big uh, danger for people who are living in these areas. So uh, with this, I just want to highlight the importance to get, a, um, let's say, transparent and also open information about urban area. And if we talk about this, I guess most of people will think about open street map. Being someone living in Europe or, or the US, probably it's very convenient to get all the geo information in open street map. But here is the key numbers. So according to UN, um, there is more than 4.1 billion buildings uh, in the world. And if you look at uh, open street map statistics from yesterday, which is April 16 uh, of this year, then you will see that there are only 600 million buildings which have a two-dimensional building footprint, so which is less than 15% of the overall building. And if you look at this 15%, only 3% of these buildings actually have a height information, which is then less than 0.5% of the all buildings. So this is basically our status quo about open data for urban research. So the question is how we can now use AI for EO to get the global urban building footprint. And uh, the first thing is to uh, choose appropriate satellite data. Uh, you may think about uh, Sentinels, which has a 10 meter resolution, which is a bit too coarse if we really want to capture individual buildings. That's why we decided for a, a new space approach we choose the uh, doves uh, from the um, Planet Labs, 
what you see on the screen is the CEO of Plant Labs holding such a small satellites they have uh, in orbit. And as I said, they have well, hundreds of them. That's why they can offer uh, global data with a resolution of for three to five meter, depending on, on the uh, positions. So um, the next step is we need to have a, a training data where a machine learning can learn from. Uh, for this purpose, we have uh, uh, created um, pairs of training data, which is the satellite image uh, with the uh, beautiful print from 74 cities uh, selected across the globe with emphasis on Africa. And then we have trained a, a deep learning, tailored deep learning model. Uh, we call it a graph convolution recurrent new network, as you can explain in a very high level. Basically, we have used the graph structure to profit uh, the context information of individual pixel. And then we have been using convolution uh, modules in order to extract high level features from the cellular imagery. And finally, we have used the recurrent uh, module in order to progressively improve the accuracy of the building extraction. So basically, after training this data, we could do the global inference. Of course, the whole pipeline is much more uh, complicated, uh, involving steps uh, starting from data acquisition to prepare data to be analysis ready. We need to train this machine learning uh, or models. And then finally, we need to do a global inference. And after the global product is generated, we still need to do editing in order to ensure the quality of the global building footprint. And uh, without going to any of these details here, just to give you a data view overview. So basically, uh, if we talk about global applications, we are talking about uh, nearly 800,000 of these kind of uh, uh, planet uh, imagery. And here you see the uh, colors uh, stands for the different image quality. Basically, we tried to globally get a high quality of the data such that uh, we're able to produce a, a, a high quality global building footprint. So um, just to show you two examples, uh, rather in Africa, and uh, these are capital cities of Morocco and Egypt. And these are uh, examples of cities where in Africa we have the most rich information. So here is a zoom in of Cairo. Basically, in yellow, you see the OpenStreetMap uh, data of today, and the uh, purple is what we have generated uh, as the global building footprint. So you can see that even in a capital city, uh, for OpenStreetMap, we really have a very high incomplete data, and basically all areas where you see purple is the information gap we are closing with uh, AI and EO. And the same, if we zoom into an uh, um, area, this is uh, basically New Cairo. You see very structured pattern. And if you look at the uh, global building footprint we generate, even with uh, coarse resolution data, three to five meter, which at the margin of rich individual buildings, but with the tailored model, we're able to reach more or less individual level uh, mapping of the buildings. The same applies for Marrakesh without going to detail, I just show you the visual imagery. And uh, this is basically the um, um, kind of most important overview. Uh, we created a um, pseudo color image where red is more Google, green is uh, our uh, global open building maps, and blue is the open street map. So you can see whenever a uh, 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 color is dominant with these three. These are uh, the data sources only available for, for this particular data source. And if you see the map, you will see that uh, in Xi'an is more uh, the Europe, where OpenStreetMap and um, ours have good data. And if you look at Africa, it's more kind of a yellowish uh, color. This means uh, both uh, Google and ours have uh, good data. But if we look at any uh, anywhere else with greenish, uh, the geo-information knowledge gap we are closing with AI uh, for you. And how can we basically profit from such a product? As you all know, due to the uh, war, we have energy crisis. 
the very uh, um, active discussion, political discussions about uh, alternative energy resources, then we were wondering in case we would uh, place solar panels on all these kind of building roofs, how much energy we could actually supply. So therefore we did a joint analysis of the generated beautiful print with the open uh, solar atlas uh, database and then we were able to calculate the solar potential of every individual buildings uh, which you see colorized. And we have getting the conclusion if we would use a affordable device. And uh, we are able to basically cover about 1.1 to 3.3 times of the global energy consumption of 2020 if we would do so, meaning placing the solar panels on the, all these building roofs. And why is 1.1 to 3.3? This then depends on the efficiency of the solar panels uh, we are about to, uh, uh, possible to choose. And of course, this is just a proof of concept. For more detailed analysis, we would need to have a higher uh, resolution data, but nevertheless, it gives a very uh, promising um, kind of message. Now I have talked about uh, a, a beautiful print where we are closing 85% of the data gap in OpenStreetMap. How about uh, buildings in 3D? So this is about 99.5% uh, information gap. So basically we are then more switched to a radar satellite. What you see is the German Terrace X uh, satellite. Uh, as you may know that uh, radar is a kind of active sensor and it's very good at um, uh, mapping in 3D and 4D. So, um, but of course, um, if we look at the radar image, you will see that um, because it has a side looking geometry and you will basically see a distorted image, which we call layover. So you see all the buildings uh, sounds like they are falling down to the ground. And basically uh, how to get 3D information from radar uh, you can compare it to OCT. Every of these satellite images could be considered as a kind of a tom tomographic slides recording the reflectance uh, uh, well, from the uh, uh, Earth's surface. And you know that the satellite is revisiting the place uh, in the case of Terra's axis every 11 days from a slightly different position. In this way, you will be able to uh, have uh, angle diversity and this uh, is like building up a synthetic aperture along this uh, elevation direction. For CT, you can imagine then you have multiple uh, scans uh, of the Earth's surface. And uh, with this kind of data, uh, rather with some more model-based methods, um, radar tomography, which is also called uh, the X-ray of the Earth, then we're able to get uh, basically the 3D reconstruction from the whole CT. So, of course, uh, the whole thing is uh, very computationally demanding and uh, to resolve every of these pixels, uh, it's more like uh, solving a kind of non-convex problem with a dimension of around uh, 100 times 1 million. Therefore, we need to involve HPC for the information retrieval. There is recent development also about uh, using deep learning replacing this procedure to make it much more computationally efficient. Again, another benefit of deep learning. And basically we would be able to get this kind of 3D reconstruction of the cities where you see the example of Berlin. And of course, in this case, we're using half meter Terrasa X data, color stands for the height. It will be easily uh, see the uh, Berlin Central Railway Station, and also you now see the uh, statues, which is in the upper left uh, uh, corner. This is the Ziga Solida. And also along the roads, you see this kind of regular patterns. These are the lamp uh, poles along the road. So basically with uh, um, the highest um, resolution radar data, we're able to achieve a, a point density with one million point per kilometer. This is of course very useful if we are interested in 3D information. The only thing is that such data is not available globally. And therefore we will have to use a, a relatively coarser resolution data. That's why where 10x uh, comes to play. 
This is a kind of a twin configuration of a Terrasa X and the Tana X uh, with the same specifications, just fly very closely with each other to form kind of an interferometer. And with the strip mode of the Tana X data, we can then get the global coverage. And if we uh, go back to our pipeline, so basically it means instead of uh, having let's say 20, 30 images of a city with a half meter resolution, if we would switch to Tana X, this would mean basically up to eight images per city with the resolution which is about three meter instead of half meter. Then of course uh, you expect a lower, uh, let's say, uh, det level of detail of the reconstruction. But nevertheless, we can get the building height and we could easily combine with the global building footprint we have generated then it's a possibility to globally get this kind of uh, global 3D model, which is uh, simply the building footprint plus a single height. So um, this kind of data might not be, uh, um, let's say, special if you talk about uh, very well mapped regions like Europe or in the US. But if you are talking about uh, 99.5 of the buildings where you don't have 3D information, this is, of course, a tremendous uh, improvement of the information basis. And you may wonder which kind of uh, accuracy we can achieve. So what you see on the screen is the example of Munich. And by com uh, compare this with uh, very high resolution LIDAR point counts, uh, we compared about more than 30,000 uh, buildings. In the end, we're able to get a, a building height accuracy, which is uh, uh, mostly better than 2 meters. And this is the inference uh, results of uh, Da as Salam in 3D. So these kind of cities would then, uh, for the first ever time, have such open data via this approach we have uh, just uh, um, discussed. Okay, yeah, this is about uh, 3D, but we can do much more. We can, for example, uh, understand better a global urban climate. And uh, we have experienced uh, several hot summer uh, in the past years. This is, of course, uh, a very uh, kind of uh, 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 severe for the vulnerable group like the elderly people. And uh, also, uh, since 2014, in the IPCC report, there is a, a special chapter on urban areas, which are highlighting um, the impact of urban to uh, our today's climate. And um, with AI for you, what we could do? For example, we are able to uh, um, um, map uh, global urban areas with uh, local climate zones. This is a kind of a classification schema which is defined by the climatologist. And the idea is to uh, uh, categorize how compact is the build uh, area and how high are the buildings, how many percentage uh, are green. This kind of information, of course, helps a lot to understand uh, the local climate. And this also actually helps with people who want to understand urban morphology. Because on the right, you see the example of Vancouver. When we talk about uh, high-rise compact, which is the class number one, basically this was the city center. And if we look at the class number seven, which is lightweight low-rise, then this would be the our immediate reflect how a slums would look like. So this can give us a kind of a prior knowledge about where probably the informal settlements are, actually are globally. And of course, in order to do this kind of uh, mapping, the first step is to create annotation data sets. And for this particular uh, task, we have uh, uh, selected 42 cities across the globe covering all country zones because the uh, uh, architecture, building up, planning, mm, and so on, dependent uh, a lot on the uh, cultural uh, uh, regions. And also, we then um, tie this kind of images to patches, and we give uh, uh, a notation which uh, of this one of the 17 classes it belongs to. And on top of this, uh, we actually uh, have selected the Europe uh, and ask um, multiple uh, experts to give a vote um, about the annotation. 
such that we'll, we'll also have a, a clue about the uh, certainty in the annotation, which is super important if we want to provide basically a quality score of the results. So, of course, once the training data is available, we can train different models for different data. Um, if we are talking about seasonal Sentinel-2 data, it's a quite a common practice that we could uh, stack convolutional uh, modules with uh, LSTMs in order to, on the one hand, to have the high-level feature extracted from multi-seasonal data, on the other hand, from the sequential change, then we're able to benefit from the uh, philo philological patterns, which leads to a better classification of the local climate zones. And what you see on the screen is the first uh, global urban local climate zones. And of course, the interesting area is rather the reddish areas, which are built areas. And if we zoom into these parts, then you will see on the left is the well-known global urban footprint, the kind of information available uh, uh, already before this kind of uh, um, climate uh, uh, classification. It's a binary task for urban and non-urban. And on the right-hand side, you see the local climate zones classification where you are able to get much more kind of climate and morphology-related semantics uh, from the data. And with this data, what can we do? So we have done a simply uh, a kind of uh, analysis with the population. So you see basically here a pine chart of amendment structure. And basically, if we put uh, uh, the population density of 1,692 cities with the population data, these are all cities uh, according to UN with population more than 300,000 we're able to get a, a kind of a quantitative measures about uh, global inequality. So basically, from the data of these cities, we figure out 40% uh, area of compact, light, large, low-rise. These are more the apartments and of informal settlements. They accommodate about 60% of the total population. And then 30% of area of sparse built, these are more houses and they are only accommodating about 10% of the total population. Yeah, so this is just one example about uh, urbanization, but actually AIFOEO can support many different applications, like uh, ledger hazards to detect uh, the volcanic uh, deformation patterns from radar uh, in the fairgrounds, or food security to uh, classify crop types, uh, predict yield, and then do joint analysis with the socioeconomic data. Or SDGs, we are able to also do the um, uh, mapping of uh, uh, informal settlements on a global scale. Um, also, on the right, you see the uh, crisis response example. Basically, you know that uh, in Beirut, there is a uh, tragedy happened with the explosion. So if you would run this model before and after the event, you can very quickly get an uh, idea about the damage which has happened. And a very important area is uh, climate change, where with AI for you all, it is possible to detect disturbances caused, caused by the uh, permafrost thawing, or it's possible to uh, get the uh, uh, coming from of glacier and so on. And uh, also, it is possible to basically, for example, from the social media data, to better understand uh, social dynamics and also to very, uh, let's say, practical things, safety, security, um, where you see the examples of uh, detect and tracking uh, vehicles, uh, which is very important uh, for disaster management. For example, if a flood happens, so basically to guide the transportation such that there will be no danger um, for the people. Yeah. So this basically summarized the first topic um, I want to address. And I will also give a, a quick intro to two other uh, directions, which actually was a lot of attention um, for the community.